Greetings, body jugglers. Satek Ananda here from Venice Beach, uh, the new home of Body Juggling International, with uh, my longest uh, client here, Nancy Cody, up in uh, Richmond, Maine. Is that it? Did I yeah. finally get it right? Look Very good, yes. <laughs> Richmond, Maine. Um, all right, and this series is called The Mastery of Flow because what we're focusing on is, number one, getting you back to a state of flow, uh, in Dragonfly, uh, but number two, um, developing a new choreography for the next form, which, which to me is more important, but that one's got a flow too. So getting you back in touch with the flow of the first one will, will be an, like a necessary prerequisite. Um, so what, what we're going to begin to do now last week was a little bit of, of conditioning and a little bit of form work. Um, this week, I, I wanted to, to make sure that your focus on this group of sessions is the, uh, the creative shift in your practice as opposed to your body composition. A am I correct? Yes. Okay, and you understand why that's an important distinction, right? Yes, we're moving towards flow. Um, we're not... I think I'm strong enough to do the moves, even though I probably could improve there too. We always could improve, but getting into the flow. So it's a seamless. See my hand? <laughs> no, I do, I, I do see your hand. I do see your hand. Uh, good, good answer, but there's a simpler answer. And the reason is we cannot train both body composition and creative expression effectively at the same time. Do you understand that? Okay, yes. All right, so um, if you want to increase your speed, then that's one thing. If you want to increase your endurance, then that's a totally different thing. But you cannot effectively increase both of those things simultaneously because they're different skill sets, right? So you have to focus on what is most important in any given moment in training. And so if I am focusing on teaching you deeper aspects of flow and creating some new form, I'm expressly not focusing on the kind of movements and the kind of calorie burning that I would focus on if the goal was body composition and vice versa. If I am teaching you in the way I would for body composition and you're doing high intensity rep power work, you're never going to get the amount of flow nor the amount of creativity you're going to get with focusing on that. So, so does that make sense? Yes. Yes. Okay. So understanding that and the main reason I wanted to make that clear is so that you're not assuming these sessions are supplanting any of your metabolic or, or cardio or, you know, strength training like this session does not replace any of that. You will do a lot of moving in these sessions, but the purpose of them is not breaking down muscle tissue to make bigger, stronger muscles or burn calories. The purpose is cracking open your soul into freedom and deeper and more fluid expression. Make sense? Yes. All right. yes and that's where I want to go with this. Okay. So the way we're going to do this is um, it really body juggling is all about a, a language. It's a language of movement. Okay. And where you're at, is you've been speaking um, at a first grade level for like a couple of years. Does that make sense? Yeah. And, and I don't mean first grade as insulting because first grade is not easy. Like you got to do a lot of work to get through it. Um, but in order to improve as a human being, you have to increase your vocabulary. You have to increase the amount of words that you know and the amount of ways that you can combine those words to express yourself. So what we're going to begin focusing on now is increasing your vocabulary, right? Dragonfly is first grade. And this next one, which I don't really want to name it until we have it developed and we can see it. But I think the second one is going to be tiger, tiger form, which is going to be about power, but uh, feline sed seductive energy as well, right? Like strength and seduction um, is tiger. 
And, um, and so we're going to work on increasing your vocabulary in the same way that I work on increasing my own vocabulary. I can't teach you this particular vocabulary the way I taught you like all the exercises for dragonfly because like how I move is not like a seductive tigress. You know what I'm saying? How I move is like a f crazy funky monkey, you know, mm -hmm. with, a, with a little bit of tiger and some crane in them because I got a lot of balance, right? Um, so I want this form to be based on a language that comes out of your body. And the way we're going to do that is through uh, clear parameters in which you're going to play, right? You're going to experiment and play within parameters, which is how we've always done our training, but now it's going to specifically focus on expression. So it's going to be sort of like a fitness improvisation class. Okay. Any, any questions about that? No. no well, no. <laughs> uh, awesome. Tilt, tilt your screen down a little bit, and let's get started. And... Um, yeah, that's a good distance. That's cool. Um, you might could slide it a little bit closer to your bar. Fill the bar up a little bit more in the screen. How are we doing there? Closer. Closer. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Another foot or so. Yeah, so with, with movement, the more you can fill up the frame, the better from a video standpoint, the more powerful whatever you're doing is going to be. So that's perfect. <clears throat> Ball? Ball. And you're going to start sitting on that side. And you're going to put your head under the bar, hang your elbows over the bar. Elbows over, yep. Okay, now I want you to relax and really gently begin stretching. So as you stretch, I want you to remember Robin Chance's video, her little sexy minx sensual jam, jam video. And, um, and I want you to remember whatever it was that you liked about that video. And I want you to let your body begin to stretch and move in similar ways. Everything she was doing was freestyle. She was just playing. She was exploring. And I want you to let your body begin to explore. Right now, we're going to stay in this scarecrow style hanging. <clears throat> and I want you to just stretch. As you're stretching, I want you to feel what's happening. It's a different experience if you're feeling what's happening inside your body when you do a stretch than if you just do a pose because you think it looks pretty. It's a totally different you know, it's like watching a naughty movie where you can tell the woman's just pretending and when you can tell she's actually enjoying herself. It's a totally different experience. And stretching cannot be pretending. You've got to actually feel it. So the first thing I want you to do with each of these different poses you're going to play with is I want you to start small and just search for different things that you can stretch, different things that feel good, different things that create any type of emotion. Any type of emotion is good. If it's sexy, if it's sad, if it's heavy, if it's hyper, creating emotion is always good in movement. And then as you begin to feel all the tiny little small things you can do, I want you to slowly begin to make those movements larger. Explore more movements inside of that same position. So I want you to see all the different things you can do with your head under the bar and your arms wrapped over. And it's going to be more things than you think, but take a little while and just play with it. Good. Not being afraid to hang out in one given movement that feels good, but never getting stuck in any one place for too long. Nice. Okay, so good. That's totally different, but it's the same pose. It's the same position, right? So we're exploring, we're variations on a theme, like in music. And you ended up with your head. No, yep. Play with side to side for a second. Each side is going to offer different. Oh, yeah. 
challenges and benefits. So now I want you to let that evolve and play with coming from one side of the bar back to the other. Softly, gently, sexily, funly, sadly, however it wants to happen. I want you to go from one side of the bar to the other several times. Yep. And notice how many different ways you can get there. Notice the different types of energy you can use to get there. Nice. Remember to pay attention to what you're feeling. If you make it feel good, it's always going to look good. Mm -hmm. More outside the box. So you're stuck in a really small box now, and I want you to explore more. So let the hips move more, let the legs move more. Mm -hmm. Nice. See, very subtle change, and that's a totally different, like that's the prettiest lazy pigeon you've ever done right there. So then your shoulders are always scary. Say what? Shoulders are always scary for me. Well, but that's why we got to work them and, and slowly open them. Slowly get them used to feeling weight, feeling pressure. Okay, good. Oh, nice. Can't believe I've never done that one. That's like a, that's a lotus fold. Yeah. Depending on which leg is in front. Mm -hmm. That's a good hip opener. And, and shoulders when you rock like that. Nice. Okay, now I want you to come to uh, center underneath the bar, spine uh, going in parallel with the bar. So you're going to lay lengthwise under the bar, belly up. Yep. Yep. Um, yeah, and actually, let's, let's start in the middle of the bar, and, and let's do feet off the ground first. And what you're gonna do here, you're gonna put your feet on the bar. And I want you to play under the bar here. Gently, softly, quick, sensually, however it feels natural. Play hanging from the bar for just a couple of minutes and explore. Explore the feeling, explore the weight. Explore the circles. You can let go of one foot if you need to. You can let go of one hand if you need to. But the idea is variations on the theme of hanging from the bar. So everything we're doing is themes. And we're going to play with those themes and see how many versions we can get of the same one thing. So this is still hanging from the bar. Totally different pose. Same theme. Beautiful. Notice how easily the evolution happens if you just let it. If you don't think too much, if you just feel and you just move, everything creates itself. Gorgeous, gorgeous. That pose is going to be in tiger. So notice when you feel and flow and when you're connected to what you're feeling and notice when you slip out of that and you start thinking. You just want to start to catch when you're blocking your own flow, when your mind gets in the way. 
<clears throat> and I want you to focus on increasing those spaces where you just continue to move and evolve and feel and you're not stuck thinking. Nice. And I have this feeling that I always want things to be balanced, so I'm having a really hard time now not making my other leg go back. No, that's, that's, back. that's okay. You can play with symmetry. That's perfectly okay. Just don't let it distract from your evolution. Symmetry is very important in this practice, but but I will agree with you that it is less important when we're exploring, right. um, but I don't want you to be afraid of it. It was like a block. It was like, I can't come out. It was the other day. Yeah. Well, That's part right. of what the symmetry about also is, is locking it in your nervous system because without doing things on both sides, you'll never remember what you did before. But having to recreate it on the other side kind of locks it into your brain a little bit better. <clears throat> so you let go of the feet, but this is still hanging. Same thing. Yep, so that's a good pose. See if you can push that further. Can you drop that? Say what? pose is called pull your pants down. Pull your pants down. That's a club hit right there. Pull your pants down. Pull your pants down. And Put then, your hands down, shake your baby, you get around. <laughs> they would be doing it too. People would totally be pulling their pants down in the club. Nice. It's an inverted fold hanging just from the vertical or just from the horizontal beam. I mean, did you get to see uh, the episode of Sweat Ink? Yes, I did. I just got to see it this morning. I was I was surprisingly impressed. Yep. They didn't make me look nearly as silly as I expected them to. Nice. Good. Very nice evolution. I can tell you're feeling. Good. And so whenever you're creating, whenever you're exploring, you want to stay in one theme only as long as you can feel like you're still evolving. Once you start to have trouble evolving, once you start to think too much, then it's time to change your theme, right? So I'll give you about another 30 seconds on this hanging theme and then we're going to change our theme. Nice. It feels nice. Mm -hmm. It's like a hamstring thing. Hamstring and shoulders. Oh, nice. Mm. Good. Now from there to whichever side of the bar is easiest and feels most natural, you're going to come up to your knees, but I want you to do it smoothly. I want you to do it with chi. Mm -hmm. Good. Now this is your theme. Your theme is knees. And I want you to play with the theme of knees. Start small. See how many different things, how many different movements you can do. <clears throat> Only once you've explored all the subtle movements you can do, do I want you to come off of your knees. So come back on your knees. Don't come off your knees yet. Start with the small movements first. Search for all the things you can do in the shoulders and the spine with your weight, with lateral, with twist, before you come off your knees. Good idea. I'm not, I'm not limber enough to do that either, but Robin sure rocked it. Yeah, it's the fear of it just letting go. <laughs> well, you can work on that one this week, and the way you would do it is let your knees go forward as far as you can and focus on your back bend. So fo focus on bend, yep, bending backwards and feeling, 
and then slowly you're going to be able to go further down without losing. Yeah, don't go too far though. Yep, yep, not bad, not bad. And then come back up and then practice that, creating as little tension on yourself as you can. And you'll have a, re you'll have a really sweet move that not a lot of, oh, coming up's tough, <laughs> that not a lot of people will be, well, I think a lot more women will be able to do that move than men. <clears throat> you got to be flexible. That yoga pose, saddle pose. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I always forget they have some really extreme poses in yoga. And you need to stretch that back out after that. Yep. So notice that you can take your head under the bar and hang your arms, and that's connecting two different themes, right? So you started with your head under the bar and arms over the, now you're connecting knees and that theme together. Once again, be careful. Don't go, don't explore too far out of your control range but definitely play, definitely explore. And then now you can begin to yep, play with the sides. You can come off your knees a little bit now if you want to, but don't go too far away from your knees. You're gonna explore the theme of knees or shins. So one thing you haven't done at all is a knee raise. You haven't come up off of the ball. So that's going to be a part of that theme. That's going to be a possibility in that, in that letter or that whatever you'd call that in, in, a, in a vocabulary. So with hands on, I want to see you play with up and down. I want to see how sensual you can make up and down. Mm -hmm. So how do you get up and down gracefully without struggle, without nice, nice. It's going to be hard to think about it, but if you feel it, your body will find that path of least resistance. Good. Nice. And then incorporate side to side movements as well. You can use the sides of your hips if you want to. You can split your legs like you did before, but just don't go too far away from your knees, from your shins. <clears throat> Searching number one for good stretches, number two for fun movements, and number three for effortless connections between both between feel good and feel fun. Nice. Good, about 30 more seconds playing with this theme, then we're going to change it. Good, and back to your butt, center of the bar. And I'd say start on the other side. Yep. Good. Now the theme, we're going to combine two things. We're going to take weight, meaning 
how I'm often telling you, don't avoid the ground. I'm like, reach down, use the ground. The ground's part of the apparatus. So right now is the theme is going to be weight. So I want to see some part of your body touching the ground almost all the time. And we're going to combine that theme with the volumetric space around the bar. So I want you to look at that space. You've got 10 feet on that side and you've got 10 feet on this side. And I want you to begin moving and let your body fill all of that space like a liquid. Not even concerned about what your poses or your movements are, but concerned about moving your body all the way through that volumetric space. You want to take up all of that space like water. So if we had an animation and we could take pictures of you in three-dimensional space, that was cool. That when you finish this, there'll be a piece of you in every part of that volume. Good, good. You want to use that space fully because that's a part of vocabulary that you'll never get to if you're stuck floating on that ball. The ball's just a tool. The bar's just a tool. The floor's just a tool. And the space is the medium. Good. So you still got a lot of empty space over towards this side of the bar on both sides. You got a little bit of it on this side. You still haven't touched it on that side. So before you get too into stretchy, oh, that feels good, I want you to focus on moving through that space. Take up as much of that space as you can. Mm -hmm. And remember, you don't have to stay on the ball. You can stand up and roll the ball with your arm or your hand. Like, remember, you're not stuck to the ball. The point here is filling that space. So from there, there you go. That's, that's filling that space really good. Yep. Yep. Now, starting right now, I want you to pretend you haven't done any movement. We're starting over. This is your animated spot. Boom, filling that space. Now I want you to try to fill all the space again on both sides of the bar. Move and fill up all of that space. Stick an arm out. Stick a leg out. And let me know when you feel like you've gotten to all of it. So all 10 feet on that side. Remember, thinking of it as a volume. Mm -hmm. Good. Yep. Now you're taking up the other corner. And so when you're in that corner, go back where you just were. When you're in that corner, if you're thinking in terms of volume, right? <clears throat> so come back up to your side right there. Side on the ball. Okay. Here's an example. So your right hand reaches towards the corner of the bar, not the upper corner. Okay. Now let that hand come back in towards me. Twist onto your belly. Okay. So do that again. Go back and look at all the space that arm is taken up as it moves. Okay. This is what I mean by filling the volume. Twist, move that arm towards me and you're taking up all of that space down to that corner. Boom, right? From there, move that hand straight up as high as you can. In this direction? Yep. Okay, so that's taking up all of that space. Now, however you can, move back towards the other side of the bar on this side of the bar. Move back towards the other side. Yep, and then use those arms to take up that space. Use those legs to take up that space, stretching out to really find the boundaries, almost like how far, exactly, how far can your body expand from that bar, exactly. <clears throat> Take up all of that space. Nice, yes, yes. Good. 
Good. So we're not doing this to try and be pretty. We're doing this to find all of this medium that we're missing when we move inside of really small patterns. And making my body move like that. Woo, yeah. Hey. yeah, yeah, yeah. So stretch it out and then we're going to do it again. So I'll come up with a name for this, but it's basically like fill, fill the volume of the space. So from the time you, from the, from the, what'd you say? Fill the void. Fill the void. Nice. So from the time you start moving, I want you to imagine taking up all of that volume if it was a box, the top of the bar, and you can go past the top of the bar if you want to, but the way I see it is the top of the bar is the top of the box, and it extends out on both sides at least five or six feet, and then it goes down to the floor, and I want you to fill that volume with your body like it's smoke, like move your body all, because that's what smoke does, right? It moves. It's never staying still and fluid dynamics makes that smoke move to every part of the room, which is why eventually you'll smell a smell everywhere in a room. So I want you to fill up the body juggling bar cube with your smell. <laughs> with, with, your, with your funky fitness smell. Mm -hmm. That requires some back bending, which is good. I need to do that. Shoulders. Hmm. Okay, so back to center. How you were moving right there was very uh, clunky and thinky. Did you, do you get that? Do you feel that? Yes, because I was really trying. How many Think sides? Yeah. In your mind. Okay, so get back on the ball, other side. So you, you, it, it, it's easy to trick yourself into needing to think when you're trying to keep your feet off the ground, okay? If your feet are touching the ground, there's no reason to think because you can go or move anywhere you want to move, okay? So this time, instead of thinking, I want you to start moving and I want you to let your body move like smoke. Smoke is always moving in orbital and spiral shapes. That ball is gonna make your body move in orbital and spiral shapes. I want you to just go and start filling that space like smoke. If, if I see you not moving like smoke, I'm gonna stop you and have you come back to here again, okay? Move like smoke and fill that space, don't think. Okay, floor, however I think smoke is moving. Yes, but using the floor, because if you try to not use the floor on this, you're going to be stuck floating, and we don't want that. I want you to be able to use everything, because you got to get to all of that volume. Okay, and smoke. Good, good. Let it keep going. Let it keep going. Yes. Let it keep going. It doesn't stop. It's flowing. Nice. Good. Keep it up. Keep it up. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. And then search for where you haven't gotten yet. Figure out how to get there organically. Nice. Okay, so where you stopped and got up, that wasn't very smoky. Keep going. That's smoky. The fluidity, the curve, the twist. Keep it going. And it doesn't mean you have to move in the same direction. You can come to a gentle stop and reverse, you know. But not doing hard angles, not doing stops and starts, not thinking. Ha 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 ha, nice. Good. Much freer, much freer, more organic. Good. Awesome. Much better. Feel the difference? Yes. Awesome. So we want to cultivate that smoky feeling, that, that, filling the void feeling in everything we do. Um, next, I'm gonna teach you a couple of tricks because I know you'll have fun with them, but also this is another way to increase your vocabulary. And you just actually did the move that I already knew I was gonna teach you today. You just did it on your own. Um, so you're gonna stand on this side of the bar 
and you're going to face the bar. Left hand is on the bar, I think. Yep. And uh, twist towards me just a little bit. Mm -hmm. So what you're going to do is you're going to put your right leg on top of the ball like you're doing a step over. Yep. And your leg is going to go underneath the bar, and you're going to swoop around and come up on the other side. Ooh, swoop. Yep. Now come back and do that again and find a more natural way to end that movement. Nice reverse. Okay, so uh, that's good, but complete more of your turn and bring your right foot around to touch the ground when you do it. Okay. Step over. Yep, and then reverse. Awesome. Give me 10 of those on both sides. Yeah, nice, nice. I love how you kept your leg on the ball there. Coming back is a little funky. That's right. That's right. You just, we're just, you know, that's how we learn. Nice, nice. Remember the smoke. And remember, you're always searching for flow. Someone just opened the window on that smoke. <laughs> just want you to know that if this looks easy, it's not. <laughs> It does look easy, and that's good. Don't kill yourself, but we are trying to train. Oh, yeah. We're trying to train. This is this is going to be like a letter, or maybe this would be a word. I don't know. It could either be a letter or a word in the language. Or shit, I don't know. Maybe that's a whole sentence. <laughs> it's too complicated to be a word. I mean, it's too complicated. Yeah, it's too complicated to be a letter. So it's either a word or a sentence. Good. Just give me a few more. One more time. A little bit there. One more time. <laughs> That's going to be all about where your core is. If you're if you're swooped in motion, good. Check it out. Woo, baby. All right. So this is like a cartwheel, but not like the cartwheel on the floor. Um, you're going to go ahead and get uh, sitting on the bar, opposite side opposite side of the bar and on the side you're at the right side of the bar sit okay on the side near where, you? no where you're at sit facing the bar okay on the right side of the bar yep good okay so what we're gonna do and actually no we're gonna do the exit first so sorry scoot to the center of the bar we're gonna start in the middle of this move we're gonna do it kind of the same way we do roll out so you're going to go to inverted fold, okay, split your legs, boom, okay, so from right here, I want you to do rollout, the normal direction you're used to doing rollout, so flip one hand, you didn't, you got to flip that hand first, but yeah, start, start it over again, not, not roll, not roll over, roll out. Oh. Um. So the same way you do roll out from um, inverted fold, we're just, doing, we're just doing it from inverted splits. Inverted split, so flip that left hand and then come roll out up to your butt. 
My leg's too heavy to let me roll. <laughs> and up to my butt, up to seated. Yep. Yep. Good. And scoot your ball back. And do that again. Go to inverted fold, split, and then flip that hand and roll out. Nice. Better that time. Do it again. Is the objective to keep the ball on this side? Um, yes. Okay. Yes. That will be very important when we connect the thing. So, so your, your ball should be moving the bar and not go under it. Good. Good. So this is a variation on an old trick. Nice. Good. Now scoot your ball the other side and go the other way with your rollout. It's going to be harder because you're not used to rolling out that way. <clears throat> I have to think. Oh, my God. Uh, you're going to flip your right hand. You're going to flip your right hand. And then, yep, yep, yep. Nice. Not bad. I don't want sloppy legs. No sloppy right. legs. That's right. Right again. Mm-hmm. Good. Give me two more on both sides. Remember, getting your ball where you want it to be is of prime importance to make this work. It needs to be as far out to that other side. See how that was much easier than the last one? Because it was further out away from that bar. Um, okay, awesome. Now what, you, now what you're going to do is you're going to reverse that. So you're going to go from sitting, do that cartwheel motion, and then be upside down in inverted splits. So you can come out of inverted splits once if you want, and then I want you to reverse it. Okay. So here inverted, I splits. inverted splits. You're gonna cut you're gonna come out of it. Okay. Now reverse to go right back into it. Okay. Yep, yep. That's why you gotta <laughs> come back up. That's why you gotta keep the ball on that side of the bar. Because if it starts okay. to go under <laughs> If it starts to go under, you're going to have a really hard time getting back to that inverted split. Okay. No, I think the town. Okay. What is it for everybody? Because I was sitting under a thing and I just didn't want to get wet. Well. And should I bring it inside? I don't know who put it out there, but it's rough. Yeah, it was sitting like right out here. And I thought, oh, rain and stuff. It's just going to turn to an ice. Yeah. Thing. Thank you. I but you had one here, so I didn't know. I just, that's right. Thank you. So we're going to pull it and we come right back. Mm-hmm. So you, yep. So you're a little bit under the bar. So we're going to do that mm -hmm. and reverse it. No, no, no. Come back. Come back. Ball needs to be closer. Close what? Closer to the bar. Put the ball closer. Okay. Okay. Now do it. Roll out. Stop. Go back. Yep, you're twisting your body different when you're going back, so that's why your ball is starting to go under the bar. So yeah. come back up, come back up, reset, and do it again. Here's here's where we're going, Nance. Is you're gonna start sitting like that. You're gonna flip upside down like a cartwheel into into inverted splits, and then you're gonna come back out. So you're gonna do like a cartwheel flip on one side of the bar. Make sense? I think so. 
<laughs> but we're not, we're, not, we're not doing it right now. I want you to go back in the inverted splits again. Make sure you're kind of hanging off the ball. So I want the ball further forward than that a little bit. Okay. Roll out. Scoot the ball backwards now. See how your butt's all hanging off of it? Now I roll it forward, yeah. Now, now reverse back into that inverted splits. Okay, so part of what you're doing, go back to where you just were. Fix your ball. So part of what you're doing is you're going down to your side first. And then I'm twisting. And then you're twisting, okay? Can't yeah. do that. You're... Your left shoulder has to be has to go under along with your left thigh. So your shoulder has to come down and under along with it so that your body is twisting along the length of the bar, not in towards it. So pay attention to how your shoulder comes out of this. Right there. Now reverse. Go back. Go back. So just do that mini like that several times to feel where your shoulder's coming from and what you have to do to get it back to where you want it to be. So now you're already too far into the bar, so start again. Now reverse. See how you started going back towards the bar automatically? Yeah. Try, try to do that twist and come back without that motion. Twisting there and then come back. Yep, feel where you need to be. Yeah, do it again. A little bit, but... That's all right. You'll, you'll, you'll feel it. You'll find it. Now see if you can come up a little bit more without losing it. Mm-hmm. Good. Now come up, reset your ball, and then I want I want to see if you can flip out to your butt and then come back again. We got about ten minutes. Do you need to be done? Like a little bit early or right at five no, o'clock? So we're good. Right into it. Mm -hmm. Flip all the way. Keep going. Keep going. Boom. And then come back. It's Hips still come the backwards. Still move the ball forward. We do it again. <clears throat> Try a few going the other direction, the direction you're used to doing, you're used to doing rollouts. And then go back down. Better. I'm still turning myself on the ball. That's right. That's right. So see how that shoulder is like the last thing coming up when you twist up. So that shoulder needs the first thing needs to be the first thing going down towards that ball because that's how you get your head underneath the bar. Feel that twist. Uh-huh. Yep. So now go down and drop that shoulder immediately. Boom. Underneath. Underneath. Better. 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 Yep. Okay. So now let's do that. I want you to do what you just did from there. Flip under to inverted splits. Nope. Nope. Come back. I meant laterally. Laterally flip. 
Okay. No, 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 no. Inverted splits like we were just doing. Inverted fold, but with your legs split. Yeah, like this, right? No. No, what you're trying to learn, which is flipping upside down sideways in divert, like the exit from inverted fold split, roll out, roll back into it. Like that reverse that you've been working on. That's what I want you to do right now. Exactly. And then come back out of it again. Okay, fix your ball if you need to. I want you to do it again. Try to keep your ball as far on that side of the bar as you can. Stop when you get there. Okay, and now come out the other side. Flip your right hand, flip your right hand, and roll out the other side. <laughs> do, you, do you get what we just did there? Yeah, it's like a continuation of the direction. It's a continuation. So go back to the other side of the bar. We're going to do that again. Don't worry about how good it is or whatever. We'll work. We'll fix that later. I just want you to feel this movement so you can work on this this week. No, 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 no. Go back. Sorry, 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 sorry. Yep. Doing lateral into inverted splits. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Come back, come back. So you're still doing what I told you before. You're going down into sidekick. Do it. Go down into sidekick. Now your shoulder's coming under. Go ahead and do it and feel how now your shoulder's coming under. When you start to twist, you're pulling yourself under the bar. You feel that? Yeah. Okay, so come back again. This movement does not start by going into sidekick. This movement starts with you letting go of that right hand immediately and dropping that, that sorry, not the left hand, uh, your right hand. Let go of your right hand immediately and take that right shoulder down to where your right knee is right now. Does that make sense? That's go, go back, go back, go back. So that, that was close and you were really trying to commit, but you were still going down onto your side. So your shoulder was going straight down and I want your shoulder to come forward towards the front of the ball. Yes. Let go. And now twist and roll. Do you feel how the ball stays further on that side of the bar? I do, yes. Do, do, do that again. That, that shoulder leading that movement is a primal essence. It's almost like you want your tailbone backwards as far as you can. And then let that shoulder, there you go, that shoulder. There it is. That's what we're missing. So your tailbone needs to go down and back before you start that roll. Because whenever you come up, your tailbone's always back. Right? Yeah. So do that again, in and out on that one side. Yes. Boom. Awesome. Couple more. Then we'll do the other side and then we'll connect them. Good. Now do a couple in and out on the other side. So starting right from the very beginning, right? You can, uh, you can, you can start, you can start in, um, you can start an inverted fold and come out because you haven't been practicing on that side. So, but let's see which direction will you need to go. If you go to that side, is that the same direction you've been doing? Yeah. That's the same direction you've been doing, so you need to go the other direction. Yep. So, right hand, yep. Feel how that shoulder comes up last. So you go down, you want it to go you want it to go down first. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Then reverse it, reverse it. Not bad, not bad.
fix that ball. Practice that a few times. Good. Now scoot your ball further down to the left. And I want you to go tuck that shoulder under, swoop under to, um, to inverted fold, cartwheel style. Let go of that left hand, let go of that left hand, shoulder comes under. Head goes, boom. Now flip that left hand and come out on the other side. <laughs> go back to that end and do it again. So right now, I'm showing you the connection. We don't need to perfect this today, but I want you to work on this this week. So we're coming from sitting. Nope, 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 nope. Yep. Boom, to there. And then we want to keep going. Yep, to there. So I want you to practice making that as fluid as you can. And then I want you to practice the step over and circular spiral under the bar that we did before. You remember that one, right? Yeah. Remember both those two? Yeah, I'll find them in the video and cut them out. Awesome. And um, and and pay attention to this video and and you know cut anything you want to out of it. Ask me questions about it because we did a lot of good headway in this. You learned a lot of new aspects of language. And we're going to keep this evolving and growing and it's going to, you know, we'll get more acrobatic stuff as well. And this form is going to be more, more uppity than, than the, the dragonfly. The dragonfly was all Tai Chi. This one's going to be more, you know, um, more dancing. Um, great work. Any questions about this stuff? No, it's good. My body says thank you. Ha, ah, nice. Nice. <laughs> well, I say thank you too. Um, practice that flip upside down and then come out all staying on the same side of the bar this week and then the step over spiral under and uh, and we'll jump back in again next week all right sounds good good work hon thank you yes ma'am <laughs>